Hello. In this video we're going to discuss what indices are. Indices are basically a collection of the top stocks for a particular index for a particular country. Now for instance, here we have the CAC 40. The CAC 40 is the French index. The 40, in this case, denotes the top 40 companies for France. So it is the top 40 companies, public limited companies, in France, all calculated together and then given a price. The reason why indices are presented in such a way where, for instance, we have the CAC 40 and uh, with the FTSE, we have the FTSE 100 and FTSE 250 and have, uh, the Nikkei as well and the NASDAQ in America and the Dow Jones is the whole purpose of which is to prevent, provide you with a snapshot of how business or the top businesses are doing as a whole. And the general assumption that's made is that if all those businesses are doing very well as a whole, as a group, then the economy for that country essentially must be moving forward. So if everything is going all in the one direction, in this case, say for instance in the CAC going upwards here, there is the assumption therefore that the, the country is doing relatively well. That is just an assumption of course because as we'll discuss later in some of the other videos, that the actual price that we see that's given for a stock is not based on any supply or demand. It's literally just based on what people feel that it's worth. It has no real intrinsic value other than what people are willing to pay for it. What people are willing to pay for a particular stock, or for anything for that matter, is simply based on what they feel. That's a key thing you need to understand with trading and with how the markets move. It's about a feel for what things are worth. Not your feeling, but it's a general overall, overall feel for that particular value, for that stock. Now that is presented here as the top 40 companies in France, all piled in together, then added together and then presented as one fixed number. Now going back to the previous video that we showed on how financial charts are read, once again this is all based on the end of day price, the closing price for that day for each of the top 40 companies for the French index. And these are then plotted one by one on the chart for each day. So if we look at the CAC 40 we can see that uh, we did pretty, you know, it did pretty well up until uh, 7,000, uh, which was the beginning of the dot-com bust period. This period here, we can see pretty much was mirrored throughout many stocks, throughout many indices. See it in the DAX. The DAX is the German index. Here we have the. Dow Jones, famous American index, as we can see, did very much the same thing. FTSE 100, of course, did the same thing. NASDAQ, very similar. And the Nikkei, too. But they all crashed pretty much at the same time, and this is what's basically called a bubble where we have an overinflated period. It slows down, or basically what we'll discuss later is what's known as consolidates, really slows down and then falls dramatically. We also have a mirror of one side, it's almost a, a, an exact copy of what happened previously if we look at the negative side, the, the what's called a bearish side on this side, as opposed to the bullish side, this side, which we'll talk about more later what bullish and bearish really mean and where it came from. So as we can see with the CAC and the DAX and the Dow and the FTSE and the NASDAQ and Nikkei, 
it was all based on assumptions. Nothing was actually, no one was actually producing any more. It was just based on the assumptions that the dot com, anything involved in dot com or the internet was going to make an absolute fortune. And back in early 2003, when things started to settle down and begin to take off again, those two to three years were a real minefield and, and uh, were full of an awful lot of doubt as to whether the internet would actually provide the the masses of uh, revenue that they do that it does now. As you know, it's an established business model that we're all, all very familiar with. But back then, even though it's relatively uh, close in terms of in terms of years, uh, it, it was seen as an unknown. And this period was pretty much what would be classed, say, as the gold rush, where everyone was jumping on board and everyone thought that it was going to make everyone very wealthy. So anyone that had uh, an internet idea literally jumped on board things and the whole the whole market went nuts as a result of that so it was all simply based on speculation nothing more no one was producing more in fact in many cases some were producing much less but it was all based on the excitement and this is where it's all based on the whole feel the whole sort of greed factor of the assumptions that are made on that particular stock when that happens you get a kind of a knock-on effect when one person sees that somebody else is buying it then they buy it and then you know it all kind of triggers from there and increases and grows and grows and grows and then you get what's what, what we call a bubble here but so that's just basically one example of how you know we can see these huge swings within charts and how they're created and we'll discuss that more in, in, in future videos. But for now, just understand that when the news programs and the financial programs state, you know, that the CAC 40 has gone up, or the DAX, or the Dow, or the FTSE 100, or so on, they're basically talking about, as a whole, the top, say in this case the FTSE, the whole top 100 companies, as measured by the Financial Times, because uh, that's what the FTSE um, stands for, um, is uh, the top 100 companies are, as a whole, as a group, growing or falling, or rising and falling. So it is that that we're representing in these charts, and it allows a basic snapshot as to what has happened over the past day, week, months, or even years in terms of the top 100 companies for the sake of the FTSE or the Dow Jones, the DAX, the CAC, NASDAQ and Nikkei.